Joshua chapter 12. These are the kings of the land whom the Israelites had defeated, and whose territory they took over east of the Jordan, from the Arnon Gorge to Mount Hermon, including all the eastern side of the Arabah. Sihon, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Hezbon. He ruled from Aroah on the rim of the Arnon Gorge, from the middle of the gorge, to the river Jabok, which is the border of the Ammonites. This included half of Gilead. He also ruled over the eastern Arabah, from the Sea of Galilee to the Sea of Arabah, that is the Dead Sea, to Beth Jeshimoth, and then southward below the slopes of Pisgah. And the territory of Og, king of Bashan, one of the last of the Rephaites, who reigned in Ashtaroth and Edrei. He ruled over Mount Hermon, Salaka, all of Bashan, to the border of the people of Gishur and Meaka, and half of Gilead to the border of Sihon, king of Hezbon. Moses, the servant of the Lord, and the Israelites conquered them. And Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave their land to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, to be their possession. Here is a list of the kings of the land that Joshua and the Israelites conquered on the west side of the Jordan, from Baal Gad in the valley of Lebanon to Mount Halak, which rises towards Seir. Joshua gave their lands as an inheritance to the tribes of Israel according to their tribal divisions. The lands included the hill country, the western foothills, the Arabah, the mountain slopes, the wilderness, and the Negev. These were the lands of the Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. These were the kings. The king of Jericho, 1. The king of Ai, near Bethel, 1. The king of Jerusalem, 1. The king of Hebron, 1. The king of Jarmuth, 1. The king of Lachish, 1. The king of Eglon, 1. The king of Giza, 1. The king of Debir, one. The king of Gide, one. The king of Horma, one. The king of Arad, one. The king of Libna, one. The king of Adalam, one. The king of Makeda, one. The king of Bethel, one. The king of Tepua, one. The king of Hepha, one. The king of Aphek, one. The king of Lasharon, one. The king of Madon, one. The king of Hazor, one. The king of Shimron Miron, one. The king of Akshaf, one. The king of Teyanach, one. The king of Megiddo, one. The king of Kedesh, one. The king of Jokneam in Carmel, one. The king of Dor in Naphoth Dor, one. The king of Goyim in Gilgal, one. The king of Tirzah, one. Thirty-one kings in all. Joshua chapter 13 When Joshua had grown old, the Lord said to him, You are now very old, and there are still very large areas of land to be taken over. This is the land that remains. All the regions of the Philistines and Geshurites, from the river Shihor on the east of Egypt to the territory of Ekron in the north, all of it counted as Canaanite, though held by five Philistine rulers in Gaza, Ashdod, Ashkelon, Gath, and Ekron, the territory of the Avites on the south, all the land of the Canaanites, from Eira of the Sidonians, as far as Aphek and the border of the Amorites, the area of Byblos, and all Lebanon to the east, from Baal Gad below Mount Hermon to Libo Hamath. As for all the inhabitants of the mountain regions from Lebanon to Mishrafoth Maim, that is all the Sidonians, I myself will drive them out before the Israelites. Be sure to allocate this land to Israel for an inheritance as I have instructed you, and divide it as an inheritance among the nine tribes and half of the tribe of Manasseh. The other half of Manasseh, the Reubenites and the Gadites, had received the inheritance that Moses had given them east of the Jordan, as he, the servant of the Lord, had assigned it to them. It extended from Aroa, on the rim of the Arnon Gorge, and from the town in the middle of the gorge, and included the whole plateau of Medaba as far as Dibon, and all the towns of Sihon, king of the Amorites, 
who ruled in Hezbon, out to the border of the Ammonites. It also included Gilead, the territory of the people of Geshur and Meaka, all of Mount Herban and all Bashan, as far as Salakah, that is, the whole kingdom of Og in Bashan, who had reigned in Ashtaroth and Edrei. He was the last of the Rephaites. Moses had defeated them and taken over their land, but the Israelites did not drive out the people of Geshur and Meakah, so they continue to live among the Israelites to this day. But to the tribe of Levi he gave no inheritance, since the food offerings presented to the Lord, the God of Israel, are their inheritance as he promised them. This is what Moses had given to the tribe of Reuben according to its clans. The territory from Aroa on the rim of the Arnon Gorge, and from the town in the middle of the gorge, and the whole plateau past Medaba to Hezbon, and all its towns on the plateau, including Dibon, Bamath Baal, Beth Baal Mion, Jehaz, Kedamoth, Mephaath, Kiriathaim, Sibma, Zirath Sheha on the hill in the valley, Beth Peor, the slopes of Pisgah, and Beth Jeshimoth. All the towns on the plateau, and the entire realm of Sihon, king of the Amorites, who ruled at Hezbon. Moses had defeated him and the Midianite chiefs, Evi, Rechem, Zur, Hur, and Reba, princes allied with Sihon, who lived in that country. In addition to those slain in battle, the Israelites had put to the sword Balaam, son of Baal, who practiced divination. The boundary of the Reubenites was the bank of the Jordan. These towns and their villages were the inheritance of the Reubenites according to their clans. This is what Moses had given to the tribe of Gad according to its clans. The territory of Jazer, all the towns of Gilead and half the Ammonite country, as far as Aroa near Rabbah, and from Hezbon to Ramath Mizpah and Betanim, and from Mahanaim to the territory of Debir. And in the valley, Beth Haram, Beth Nimra, Sakoth, and Zaphon with the rest of the realm of Sihon, king of Hezbon, the east side of the Jordan, the territory up to the end of the Sea of Galilee. These towns and their villages were the inheritance of the Gadites according to their clans. This is what Moses had given to the half tribe of Manasseh that is, to half the family of the descendants of Manasseh according to its clans. The territory extending from Mahanaim and including all of Bashan, the entire realm of Og, king of Bashan, all the settlements of Jair in Bashan, sixty towns, half of Gilead and Ashtaroth and Idrei, the royal cities of Og in Bashan. This was for the descendants of Machir, son of Manasseh, for half of the sons of Machir, according to their clans. This is the inheritance Moses had given when he was in the plains of Moab, across the Jordan east of Jericho. But to the tribe of Levi, Moses had given no inheritance. The Lord, the God of Israel, is their inheritance, as he promised them. Joshua chapter 14 now these are the areas the Israelites received as an inheritance in the land of Canaan, which Eleazar the priest, Joshua son of Nun, and the heads of the tribal clans of Israel allotted to them. Their inheritances were assigned by lot to the nine and a half tribes, as the Lord had commanded through Moses. Moses had granted the two and a half tribes their inheritance east of the Jordan, but had not granted the Levites an inheritance among the rest, for Joseph's descendants had become two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. The Levites received no share of the land but only towns to live in, with pasture lands for their flocks and herds. So the Israelites divided the land just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Now the people of Judah approached Joshua at Gilgal, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh the Kinezite, said to him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God at Kadesh Barnea, about you and me? I was forty years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land, and I brought him back a report according to my convictions. But my fellow Israelites who went up with me made the hearts of the people sink. I, however, 
followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. So on that day Moses swore to me, The land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance and that of your children forever, because you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for forty-five years since the time he said this to Moses, while Israel moved about in the wilderness. So here I am today, eighty-five years old. I am still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. Now give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. You yourself heard then that the Anakites were there and their cities were large and fortified. But the Lord helping me, I will drive them out, just as he said. Then Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and gave him Hebron as his inheritance. So Hebron has belonged to Caleb, son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite, ever since, because he followed the Lord, the God of Israel, wholeheartedly. Hebron used to be called Kiriath Arba, after Arba, who was the greatest man among the Anakites. Then the land had rest from war. Luke chapter 12 Meanwhile, when a crowd of many thousands had gathered, so that they were trampling on one another, Jesus began to speak first to his disciples, saying, Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed, or hidden that will not be made known. What you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight, and what you have whispered in the ear in the inner rooms will be proclaimed from the roofs. I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that can do no more. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after your body has been killed, has authority to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. I tell you, whoever publicly acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man will also acknowledge before the angels of God. But whoever disowns me before others will be disowned before the angels of God. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but anyone who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. When you are brought before synagogues, rulers, and authorities, do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or what you will say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, What shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, This is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, You have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool! This very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. 
and how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the wild flowers grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it, for the pagan world runs after all such things, and your father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed, ready for service and keep your lamps burning, like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Peter asked, Lord, are you telling this parable to us or to everyone? The Lord answered, Who then is the faithful and wise manager, whom the master puts in charge of his servants to give them their food allowance at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whom the master finds doing so when he returns. Truly, I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose the servant says to himself, My master is taking a long time in coming. And he then begins to beat the other servants, both men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers. The servant who knows the master's will and does not get ready or does not do what the master wants will be beaten with many blows. But the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded, and from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. I have come to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo, and what constraint I am under until it is completed. Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on there will be five in one family divided against each other. Three against two and two against three. They will be divided. Father against son and son against father. Mother against daughter and daughter against mother. Mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He said to the crowd, when you see a cloud rising in the west, immediately you say, it's going to rain, and it does. And when the south wind blows, you say, it's going to be hot, and it is. Hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. How is it that you don't know how to interpret this present time? Why don't you judge for yourselves what is right? As you are going with your adversary to the magistrate, 
try hard to be reconciled on the way, or your adversary may drag you off to the judge, and the judge turn you over to the officer, and the officer throw you into prison. I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. Psalm 79 O oh God, the nations have invaded your inheritance. They have defiled your holy temple. They have reduced Jerusalem to rubble. They have left the dead bodies of your servants as food for the birds of the sky, the flesh of your own people for the animals of the wild. They have poured out blood like water all around Jerusalem, and there is no one to bury the dead. We are objects of contempt to our neighbours, of scorn and derision to those around us. How long, Lord, will you be angry for ever? How long will your jealousy burn like fire? Pour out your wrath on the nations that do not acknowledge you, on the kingdoms that do not call on your name, for they have devoured Jacob and devastated his homeland. Do not hold against us the sins of past generations. May your mercy come quickly to meet us, for we are in desperate need. Help us, God our Saviour, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and forgive our sins for your name's sake. Why should the nations say, Where is their God? Before our eyes make known among the nations that you avenge the outpoured blood of your servants. May the groans of the prisoners come before you. With your strong arm preserve those condemned to die. Pay back into the laps of our neighbours seven times the contempt they have hurled at you, Lord. Then we, your people, the sheep of your pasture, will praise you forever. From generation to generation we will proclaim your praise. Proverbs chapter 17 Better a dry crust with peace and quiet than a house full of feasting with strife. A prudent servant will rule over a disgraceful son and will share the inheritance as one of the family. The crucible for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord tests the heart. A wicked person listens to deceitful lips. A liar pays attention to a destructive tongue. Whoever mocks the poor shows contempt for their maker. Whoever gloats over disaster will not go unpunished. Children's children are a crown to the aged, and parents are the pride of their children. Eloquent lips are unsuited to a godless fool. How much worse lying lips to a ruler. A bribe is seen as a charm by the one who gives it. They think success will come at every turn. Whoever would foster love covers over an offence, but whoever repeats the matter separates close friends. A rebuke impresses a discerning person, more than a hundred lashes a fool. Evildoers foster rebellion against God. The messenger of death will be sent against them. Better to meet a bear robbed of her cubs than a fool bent on folly. Evil will never leave the house of one who pays back evil for good. Starting a quarrel is like breaching a dam. So drop the matter before a dispute breaks out. Acquitting the guilty and condemning the innocent, the Lord detests them both. Why should fools have money in hand to buy wisdom? when they are not able to understand it. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a time of adversity. One who has no sense shakes hands in pledge and puts up security for a neighbour. Whoever loves a quarrel loves sin. Whoever builds a high gate invites destruction. One whose heart is corrupt does not prosper one whose tongue is perverse falls into trouble. To have a fool for a child brings grief, 
there is no joy for the parent of a godless fool. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. The wicked accept bribes in secret to pervert the course of justice. A discerning person keeps wisdom in view, but a fool's eyes wander to the ends of the earth. A foolish son brings grief to his father and bitterness to the mother who bore him. If imposing a fine on the innocent is not good, surely to flog honest officials is not right. The one who has knowledge uses words with restraint, and whoever has understanding is even-tempered. Even fools are thought wise if they keep silent, and discerning if they hold their tongues.